What a glorious day to share company and praise the name of Almighty God here at Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. This is New Life Program and I'm your host, Chileno Diambo. As usual, we always have programs in store for you that are always entertaining and soothing to your soul. We always want to continue bringing to you more and more exciting items each and every day. Today, Barry Laseno will be telling us more about communication shortly. Then later on, Pastor Wahonya will also be coming in to share with us on a topic about the sins of Nababu and Abihu. Stay tuned for this and much greater items coming your way. Seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Communication is one of the important things that one should learn from the moment that he or she is born. 
One should also learn proper way of communication in order for him or her to be able to relate well with others. Barry Laseno is here to give us more information concerning communication. Communication has been known as the cause of marriage breakdown or of its growth. This is true in life, not only for marriage, but for any meaningful relation. It is often said, where there is no communication, there is no relation. In many homes, it is a real experience that is barely verbalized. I mean no one expresses it, although actions speak louder than words. But if you had the courage to ask, try this question on any couple. Do you have a lot to communicate now to each other than you had before marriage? I will guess what the answer could be from most of the couples. Before we were married, we had so much to talk about. Now, we never talk. No one seems interested in sharing anymore. This you can observe in the families in your area by looking at the parents. Experts claim that one of the most serious problems in marriage and a great cause of troubles and even divorce lies in the inability or even reluctance of many couples to communicate. Most of these couples know they are not communicating, but they are not sure exactly what it is they are or are not supposed to do. Although communication is a complex process, it isn't really complicated. What is communication, by the way? What is involved and how is it done? We often assume that if someone's lips are moving, communication is taking place. The two-way street of conversation comprises the giving and receiving of information. Communication involves more than talking. It is the receiving or listening process as well. To this two-way, you should add a third dimension, understanding. Most often we think we understand what our mates are saying, but what we hear is not what is meant. We want the other person not only to listen to what we have to say, but also to understand. There are five levels of communication that have been well researched into and recognized. An understanding of these levels of communication will help you as you seek to improve your system of communicating not only with your friend and colleagues, but more especially with your mate. John Powell in his book, Why I Am Afraid to Tell You Who I Am, has well described these five levels on which we can communicate. Find out what level of communication you are in at present and ways of improving to deepen your communication with your friends or colleagues and mates. Thank you very much for being with us. My name is Beryl Aseno. In case you have just tuned in, this is Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. I'm your host, Tileno Diambo. Send us your views, comments, and suggestions about this program by writing to the producer, Adventist World Radio, P.O. Box 42276, code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya. Or you can write to us via our email address, which is awrnairobi at eau.adventist.org. We are children of a King, Heavenly King, Heavenly King. We are children of a King, singing as we journey. Jesus Christ, our God and guide, bids us nothing terrified. Follow closely at His side, singing as we journey. We are traveling to our home, blessed home, blessed home. We are traveling to our home, singing as we journey. Toward a city out of sight, where we'll fall no shade of night. For our Savior is its light, singing as we journey. Full of joy we onward go, heavenward go, heavenward go. Full of 
joy we onward go, singing as we journey, singing all the journey through, singing hearts are brave and true, singing till our home we view. It's now time for the Bible segment. Let us now give way to Pastor Wahonya as he shares with us on a topic about the sins of Nababu and Abihu. Keep it locked to the Voice of Hope. Today we want to look at the sin of Nadab and Abihu. Dear friend, Nadab and Abihu whose story we find in Leviticus chapter 10, verse 1 to 10, were no simple people. They were the sons of Israel's priest, the nephews of Israel's leader, the head of Israel's princely elders. They had been chosen and consecrated to the priesthood, and in all the camp of Israel, Moses and Aaron alone had higher dignity than that of Nadab and Abihu. Yet in spite of all these privileges that we have mentioned, they fell into the pit of destruction. What was the nature of their sin? The sin that called forth God's immediate indignation and drastic punishment. Dear friend, when we read Leviticus chapter 10 verse 1 to 2, the Bible briefly points out their sin when it says, Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it, put censer on it, and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. So fire went out from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. What a sad ending of people who are well placed, well privileged. Beloved, the Bible says they offered strange fire before the Lord. What a shocking accident. What an unfortunate end to the lives of two promising young people. Shortly before these two committed this sin, they had spent a week in study and meditation, preparing for the day when they would begin their sanctuary service. They had assisted their father as he offered sacrifices and had brought the blood of the victims to him. They had witnessed the solemn service of dedication and had themselves been sprinkled with sacrificial blood. Dear listener, they had been thoroughly indoctrinated and were fully acquainted with the sacredness of God's work. They therefore had no reason to use strange fire instead of the prescribed fire from the altar of burnt offering, which God himself had kindled and was therefore sacred. Why then did they involve themselves in such an act? What could have dulled and benumbed their sense of perception? Dear friend, we are told that Nadab and Abihu would never have committed that fatal sin had they not first become partially intoxicated by the free use of wine. This resulted in their minds becoming confused and their moral perceptions dulled. Wine and strong drink, dear friend, can so benumb the faculties of a person that he fails to make a clear distinction between right and wrong, between holy and unholy, between clean and unclean. The use of liquors has the effect to weaken the body, confuse the mind, and debase the morals. That is why, beloved, in Proverbs 31 verse 34, God counsels and says, do not gaze at wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly 
In the end, it bites like a viper. Your eyes will see strange sights and your mind imagine confusing things. You will be like one sleeping on the high seas, lying on top of the rigging. This is the disastrous effect of intoxicating drinks that many people today, like Nadab and Abihu, forget. And so, dear listener, you are a special person before God. God says that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, that you are bought at a price. Therefore, you need to honor God with your body. Let me invite you today to think seriously about the sin of Nadab and Abihu. And may God help you in your daily life to stay clear of any intoxicating drink that your body will be given to your God completely. And God will bless you. That brings today's New Life program to an end. It was nice having your company. Stay tuned to Adventist World Radio for other greater items coming your way. Remember to send us your views, comments, and suggestions regarding this program. Do so by sending them to the producer, Adventist World Radio, PO Box 42276, code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya. Our email address is awrnairobi at eau. Dot Adventist dot org. From me, Tilen Odiambo, and the rest of the New Life production team, we say thank you and wish you a blessed week. And seeing the multitude. He went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying,
sea, entrancing the senses like sweet melody. Tis the voice of the angels born soft on the See. 